Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on General Hospital, Anna and John Chase Jason, Dante's family pays him a visit, and Nina seeks Ava for help repairing her marriage. Alexis and Pristina arrive at the hospital to comfort Sam, informing him that Molly is still in the workplace. Sam says she has wonderful news. Dante is out of surgery and in the intensive care unit. Pristina questions why she isn't with him. Sam wants time to process before she sees him like that, so she's delighted they're here. John arrives and talks with Anna. He heard about Dante, and Anna says he is out of surgery. John informs her of a recent development and shows her an image of Jason on the warehouse's roof. Anna is startled and thinks it's impossible. John explains that Spinelli confirmed the photograph. She knows Jason would never work for someone who intended to assassinate Sonny. John asks her where Jason would go for help. Anna says to Sonny or Sam, but they are already here. Nonetheless, there is one other person he would turn to. In the chapel, Sonny and Ava approach one another but just hug. Ava apologizes, but he insists she shouldn't. They stare into one other's eyes till Olivia enters and informs them that Dante has recovered from surgery. Sonny and Olivia embrace. Sam texts Olivia Dante's room number, so they decide to see him. On their way out, they see Lena, who has heard about Dante. Olivia says Hitley well, and they'll see him. Sonny pushes past Nina without saying anything, and Nina tells Olivia that she is pleased for her and Dante. Olivia follows Sonny. Nina enters the chapel and asks Ava what the hell is going on. What occurred tonight? Ava fills her in on what happened and explains that she was there because she couldn't stay on the sidelines any longer. Ava reveals that she was intended to be the mediator, which Nina does not comprehend, and that she could have been shot and murdered. Ava claims they all may have been and had to duck for shelter. Nina cries, saying she doesn't know what she'd do if she lost her and holds her. Nina inquires about what else occurred, and Ava says they have a lead on who may be after Sunny. Nina wonders if Ava knows who it is, and Ava tries to avoid responding. Ava states that if she had something tangible to tell her, she would. Nina is comfortable with theories. Nina believes that this is vital to her, but Ava points out that Sonny has always kept her out of his business. Ava understands how aggravating this is, but she does not want to be on the inside of it. Trust her. Nina claims Sonny is her husband and needs her, even if he does not want her aid. Ava claims Sonny needs everyone he can get right now. Nina wants her to assist her with her husband. Nina explains that despite everything they've been through, they are still friends. Ava claims that no one has been a more generous and loyal friend than she has. Nina wants her to help her with Sonny. When Ava asks if Nina has signed the divorce papers, Nina responds no. Ava instructs her not to sign them, and they'll come up with a solution. Ava claims she'll help her save her marriage. Nina hopes it's not too late, but she worries that the longer they're away, the more likely Sonny's love for her would diminish, and he'll move on with someone else. Ava recalls a moment she and Sonny shared earlier. Ava warns Nina that they cannot let this happen. They laugh and hug, but Ava seems conflicted. Christina and Sam travel to see Dante, and Alexis meets Diane. Diane wonders if she has seen Sonny. Alexis says he's around, and Diane has to give Sonny an update on his station associates. She starts to walk away, but Alexis says, not so fast. Alexis wonders why Diane has been avoiding her. Diane claims she couldn't represent Finn in his case because she was the opposing attorney, therefore she expected Finn to be upset with her. Alexis admits she was only doing her job and that she should have talked to her sooner. Diane says she would have ordinarily, but Finn is very important to her. Alexis adds Diane is also important to her, and she is upset she was unable to represent Finn. She also misses washing the floor with her in court, and Diane chuckles at how few times she won. Diane claims that the law's loss has been journalism's gain. Alexis believes that journalism is poised to suffer a loss. 
Christina and Sam discover Sonny and Olivia outside Dante's room. Christina is relieved her father is okay, but Sonny is concerned about the stress this is inflicting the baby. Christina believes that with this household, the baby should learn how to deal with stress as soon as possible. She thinks knowing Dante is doing well and visiting him helps. Sonny and Olivia enter Dante's room and announce their presence. Olivia sits with Dante and prays. As Sonny strokes his head, Olivia bends in, kisses her kid on the forehead and cries. Diane, on the other hand, has been informed of Nina's newest exploits and admits she is startled. Alexis prefers to concentrate on Sam and avoid thinking about this right now. She says, your family always comes first with you, but you also have the right to bitch about the boss. Sam and Christina head inside to see Dante. Christina sits next to her brother and discusses how baseball season will soon begin, and she knows you will not want to miss it. Sam eventually sits alongside Dante and takes his hand. Sonny meets Diane in the hallway, and she informs him that his guards are not under custody and that he must make a statement. Sonny is currently concentrating on his son. She inquires about his well-being. Sonny wants to find out who did this and deal with the matter. Sonny returns to Dante's room and speaks with Sam. She suggests he go home, but he prefers to stay. They embrace, and Sam returns to Dante's side. Michael stands before the Quartermain gatehouse, feeling as if he should be in hospital. Willow reports that his positive thoughts are reaching Dante, and she is receiving information from the nurses that Dante is stable and his status has not altered. Michael claims he just feels helpless. Dex and Joss come, and Michael expresses gratitude for what they've done for Dante. Michael inquires as to if they have any updates. Joss claims they don't know anything about Dante, but they do know who shot him. Dex and Joss say someone aided Dante after he was shot, and Michael speculates that the shooter may know Dante. Willow suggests that the individual may not have even been involved in the incident. Dex claims Chase gathered evidence, so perhaps they can hunt down this guy. Michael wonders if they saw Sonny. Joss claims they did, but he said nothing to them. Joss can't believe they're losing Dante, and it wouldn't be happening if it weren't for Sonny. Michael replies she's not wrong, but this must be killing Sonny too. Joss finds it difficult to feel sorry for Sonny because he is constantly causing harm to those they care about. Willow suggests that her current anger against Sonny is a means for her to feel less worried for Dante. Joss says that there was a period when Dante's heart stopped, and she was afraid he would die. Joss and Willow excuse themselves to care for Amelia as she screams. Michael inquires whether Dex intends to stay. Dex believes it's best for Joss if he doesn't, and Michael was correct. They come from two different worlds. The greatest thing he can do is leave and remain away. Carly gets home and climbs the stairs when Jason yells her name from the dark living room. Jason emerges from the shadows, and she is astonished. He says it's him, and she rushes into his arms, crying, you came back. He apologizes for taking so long. She inquires about his whereabouts, only to discover that Jason has been shot. He says the bullet went through and he'll be fine, but he needs a bandage. Carly proceeds to get a first aid kit, but first she asks him to pledge not to leave. He promises. Jason sits on the couch with his hand over his wound. Carly returns with a kit to clean the gunshot wound. He winces when she cleans it, and she exclaims, How can you be here? Carly thinks she could call her mother for assistance, but Jason advises her not to call Bobby. Carly claims she can't since she died. There is a sudden banging on the door, and Anna shouts out, Police, open up. Carly approaches the door and inquires about the situation. Anna asks if they can enter because they are looking for a suspect in Dante's shooting. Carly appears perplexed but allows them in. Anna suggests Carly sit down. Carly inquires whether anything happened to her children. Anna says no, and Jason Morgan is still alive. Meanwhile, Jason hides upstairs and listens. Carly says this isn't humorous, and she has been grieving for Jason for two years. John explains that they have proof, and he shows her a photo of Jason on the roof that Spinelli confirmed is true. 
Carly asks, so it's real? Is Jason alive? Anna swears he is, and they must search her house for him. Carly claims they are not searching her home, but John insists that inquiry was a courtesy. He says they don't need her approval because they have a warrant. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.